Hits. I forget what show it was. I think it was the Hot 10 where we talked about this because it was on the Hot 10 this week. Because, right, I was watching it. Yeah, because this issue sold, right? Or, or was this another issue? No, it sold. It hasn't. All right, so nine eights have not sold since the book has been running up. Um, I think it was right around COVID when it went from like the nine sixes were about seven to eight hundred, and all of a sudden, you know, it was fifteen hundred. It was two thousand. Uh, the nine fours, the nine twos, nine nine O's even ran up. And one person right around that time listed a nine eight SS at five hundred. Buy it now, and I freaking stalled a little bit and didn't buy it i should have because i'm like that's too cheap that's too cheap with everything else running when a 9.6 is at 2k plus the 9.8 is not 9.8 tends to stay at least triple a 9.6 in books like this um so no sales have happened in a long ass time i sure wasn't going to test the market um, but this one popped up first 9.8 blue label in close to a year and a half maybe even a little more last sale was 3,500 and I think also on comic link, but this bad boy, I was thinking we was going to hit 7,500 went for 96 and change. So almost two or 10 K on this damn book. So it is joining the big boys um, with albedo and, and that kind of stuff. So next primer two is probably going to be a mother too. What do you think? Uh, what are the prime? What are these selling for raw? Do these ever come up raw anymore? They do. I mean, uh, you're, I don't see them coming up for less than 500 pretty much unless it is just beat to shit. Um, at eight, five sold for near a grand. I, I want to say in that 800 range. So if you're getting a raw in upper mid grade, it's going to probably cost you 500 to $800 and anything nicer is going to be more. Now, I don't think it's going to jump again for a while. I think it's just a lot of built-up demand. There's not a lot of 9.8s. I'm sorry I didn't look at the census up top of my head. I want to say it's I want to say it's 40 to 50. I could be a little off. It's not many. Um, and it just was a, a lot of market demand on this guy. So, um, yeah, very happy. Let's go with that. Um, next book. I, I, I could have went two ways on this two books that to me were really interesting 300 of course um what caught me here is two of these images are comic link one was like the i think ended on thursday or friday and it ended at uh 6200 ish and then one on ebay ended up at 8000 and then the second one, because Comic Link, when they've got a bunch of modern, we'll put them in two different days. The second one was like almost a uh, number so damn small, 80, close to 8,500 or something. Jesus Christ. Uh, so to me, it's interesting that in the same auction on two different days, it sold for such a big swing. The first copy was there, and then, you know, they lost it, and everybody went nuts on the second copy. So. I don't think that's a trailer driven thing. I think that's purely just holy shit. We underbid. And why did we do that? So this book is floating in the uh, mid eight thousands now, uh, less than what? Six weeks since it was a $5,000 book, maybe five weeks since it was a $5,000 book. Yeah. Since you bought one. Uh, Nico, you're a little low. He said, since you bought one. <laughs> yeah, I know. I want her to say it louder. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks on that deal, Nico. I appreciate you broke. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, the other one, this one's a little more, I don't know what to say. Uh, I was watching this one thinking it would end at, uh, you know, seven, eight, nine, maybe, maybe approach the 10 K mark. Uh, it was the double signed, uh, nine, eight platinum, uh, it went for 36,000. Now, I honestly, I don't know what to say here. I looked at the bidding history. It was pretty regular bidding up to 7,700. After that, it was two guys, one with two feedback and one with 38. Hey, uh, John. Yes. Does there being uh, people's primary accounts, not their dummy accounts, uh, entering bids all the way up a certain amount mean that those bids were valid? I'm confused. 
it means one of two things happen. New buyers both went against each other and overpaid for a book by four times. Seems unlikely that two such buyers exist. By four, um, you mean 10? Yeah. 10. Oh. Why do you anyway, say that? It's like a $3,600 book and it's on its best fucking day ever. And I love the Platinum McFarlane Spider-Man one. But hey, maybe I'm just old and grumpy. Add me to that. I'm going gonna, gonna to say you're a little old and grumpy because uh, honestly... I pulled the image from Comic Link because they had a blue label go for 6K and change uh, this auction. And and you don't get as much shenanigans on Comic Link because I don't I don't think they let you cancel shit like that as much. I mean, they usually vet their buyers. If you cancel, you're not going to bid again. Um, and so I, oh, look. And that makes me think that 7K range, that double sign sounds about right, that there were a couple real bidders till there. And after that, you know, things went awry. So just if you look at market prices, just watch what's happening. I'd love um, to talk to the seller and see if they got paid. If yeah, they got yeah. paid, aim fucking end, man. You yeah. Guys. Good, good. Yeah. We, we always hold our breath when something sells and you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, Dude, I'll, I'll make a second trip to the story of my life. Yeah, I make a second trip to the post office on days when people just buy ridiculous things. <laughs> like, I'm, like, I'm going back. It's going. It's too late. No cancellation. It's a mail in like 30 minutes. I we we really should like uh, on our list of things we solicit unpaid eBay uh, items. Send oh, them God. to us on IG. Screenshot it. Let, Let us me know when you get a price that you can't are. refuse and you I get love fucked. I'll just keep score. All right, so let me just say, I, you know, we had to talk about yeah. it. it. It's it's too big a sale to not notice. I do remember saying to Nico because the six K sale got me peaked. The last time this book came up was it was mid February, and one went for two K, and I went, you know, if we're talking sports cards collectors, this is a rare variant, a nine eight, a tough book. Seems like one that if that's the audience we're talking about, is probably going to go to for a nineties book. And, and I I thought maybe it'd shoot to three or four. I'm going to argue that it's a 6K book right now. So just, I mean, there's some weird shit going on. I'm going to stick on yeah. some Spider-Man stuff here. No, it's, it's yet. Yeah, it's, it's, it's probably complete bullshit. And, and honestly, I hate the SIGs on there. It's a T McFarlane. The stand's like off on it. It's definitely not the only SS. You, I mean, maybe you can't get another. Another one's going to come for sale. Yes, like that's just, yeah, it's just it's just whatever, and there's no reason it just it shouldn't it shouldn't be up there. There are 182 <laughs> nine eights, 57 of them are SS. I don't know the breakdown of who's Stan and who's Todd and who's both, but you know you got to yeah. assume most of them are at least one or the other. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, there's, somebody's got Bagley signing that or something. You're just out of your fucking mind. Yeah, yeah. but. <laughs> All right, uh, so this book we've talked about before. This is one of the Laprenza's non-canon runs out of Mexico. Um, I know this came as a not-sold book, but um, the seller is a friend of the podcast. I know who it is. Uh, we verified the buyer, who's a Golden Age buyer, and he paid 3 k for this book. Wow, dude. Probably in a 4 and a half to 5 and a half range. Uh, so not a high grade. This is just the grades you're going to find. Um, so I, I, I think people are getting onto this run. Yeah, I think I, I'm pretty sure I got a nine, six of that for our, for, our, for our buddy. You did. And he's right. really I fucking was, happy. Yeah. I think I see him over there partying. Uh, um, yeah, I, he's, he's gotta I, be really happy because if, if, if you got this, this thing for 37 50, yeah. um, yeah, he, that was that was one of my favorite press jobs of all time. I was pretty proud of that one. <laughs> I love Robert to death, and I'm glad he got that book. But that book is one I like passed to him and thought every time he shows me that nine six, I'm like, why didn't I buy it? <laughs> Dude, what I was I doing? It. I love oh, it. Oh my god! But I'm glad. I'm glad my boy's got it. He deserves it. They say a nine four, but whatever. Like honestly, it might that might as well be. Yeah, a, 10, a 10 0 for that book i think so exactly. I, I do have two i do have two in the pile that you're pressing so but they're not they're not nines right. they're they're, they're, they. they're fives <laughs> that's okay um they they were they were a thousand dollar fives when i mailed them out now they're three thousand dollar fives <laughs> sweet um 
pop this one in because I just don't see it all the time. The old Mary Jane Venom 96 SS 2400. How the mighty have fallen. I, that's still a solid price for a 96. I think. I buy that all day, dude. Even with I, I actually prefer it without that Stanley scribble over there next to hey, your head. fucking man. <laughs> buy a lot, and I'm not saying I'm, <laughs> I have I have Stanley books, and I'm ha- and I'm and I'm cool with them, and, or whatever. Uh, this is not one that I would choose for that, and uh, uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, but I'd say, but 24 for a 96 with with even the stand on it. I mean, honestly, I. Uh, I would I'd buy that right away for twenty four hundred bucks. I think, I think that's it's a, terrible. That's one of those books though that you either love or hate, and I also don't know if new buyers are even aware of this kind of shit yet. They're not. They're not. We're gonna no. do right. We're gonna have to start revisiting the Venoms. I think that's what we're I, gonna have to do. We're gonna have to get yeah to give them their love back instead of this like store variant flash the pan shit. <laughs> get some real ratios, fuckers. Wait. Or there's one Venom book to buy. It's ASM 300. Yeah. Well, yeah. here's here's the question, and I know this is going to ruffle some feathers, but we've heard about other of the Venomized variants popping up, you know, in large quantities. Is yeah. this sitting around somewhere in large quantities? No, no. never. This didn't show up. Uh, Delato, the 667, never showed up. They're, tr- they're truly rare. There's not... Yeah, this didn't. This didn't. There's any after sales on this thing? There was none of that. Um, it's if you, you if they're around for 25 on release day and not look back. And yeah, there's not there's not a box of these. And I'd like, I like I I happen to know which ones showed up separately at Diamond. Obviously, I know some people who were able to get some. Uh, one guy that got a lot, I actually uh, won a bunch of his auctions because he he kept running them like like an idiot for like for like 24 to. Uh, 72 hour auctions and you know, like three in the morning. So I was able to actually to get some like, uh, like Iron Man 512, uh, nine, eight level or the, uh, the, the Del Mundo Hulk. I got nine, eight out of that. And that's just, those are just sitting in boxes. Cause those are some of my favorite books. So, uh, yeah, 20, 20, I, I wouldn't have thought this book. I didn't think you could get a raw for 24 for 20 for, for 24 50 or whatever that is, uh, much less, uh, a 9.6 or a nine point, you know, or that, or with the SS. Um, I think the SS might actually hurt it a little in this, in yeah. this particular instance. Well, I, I also think, you know, when we think of ratios, Spider-Man probably was the one they kind of, kind of set the mark on how many are we going to print because Spider-Man sells. We can yeah. get Spider-Man. Um, yeah. So they probably had decent estimates on that where it's some of those secondary titles that, you know, people may or may not buy. Mm hmm. So. Yeah, and there's some good there's some good ones, and I think I think a lot of those are good nine point eight uh, investments right now, or even raw investments. Um, I mean, this could be it just meant like my age, and my bias, and because because a lot of those venom variants from you know 20, 2012 and I think twenty eleven, uh, those I don't know a lot of those are came to me. And we cut our teeth on those, difficult. man. Yeah, they were hard to find. Um, they were expensive when other variants weren't. Uh, expensive there wasn't really an expensive uh ser- like series except for that one i don't think um the, well the one guy actually put the whole set together yeah uh the guy that used to write the dollar articles yeah uh sad jump. jump yeah yeah he had it and he, he actually threw the threw, threw the set together that was which, tough is, set. which is which is impressive Probably so Carter, easier, easier now. <laughs> everybody's yeah. swearing in the chat that you pulled one of these out of a, a box somewhere yeah, yeah, I got one for uh, twenty bucks like five years ago. Nice, yeah, you suck. Five years ago. Yeah, but I sold. I sold it like like maybe a, like maybe four years ago or something like that. We need Stein to jump on and go. I picked one up last week. Yeah, <laughs> for seven fifty. All right, uh, Secret Wars eight. This book's been climbing, but this is the Canadian price variant, one of only thirty six nine eight. So the Canadian price variant went for thirty eight fifty. Last recorded sale was last June at nine fifty. So people are digging on the keys. People are digging on the price variants and the newsstands. So can I, I ask a question about the modern Canadian price variants? You can. Sure. Canadian Golden Age comics, like can like. Uh, Canadian whites, 
Well, just no, not the Silver Age. No, that's, uh, that's like Golden this. Age, Canadian Whites. Okay. What are the bat? Is that what they call the Batman ones? They, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. There's like, like they have like, uh, you know, all these different like uh, UK Batmans. And well, the UK Canadian is different than Batman. Canadian. Well, nobody gives a fuck. They sell for less money. Yeah, UK hasn't it never took off the way some of the others have. Um, can't, I don't Perfect know. Timing. I, don't, I don't give. I don't freaking know why. Um, people give a shit about the Canadian ones. Um, I think I mean, it's and our Canadians are selling all their good books because they can't leave their houses right now. <laughs> well, no, I think the issue is it's a mass print book with mass appeal, and they want the rarest version. It's the same idea as a variant. I, I, I never bought them. I never chased them. I thought it was dumb. I apparently, well, there seems another... to be a disconnect between like the the older the books, right? Uh, you know, the golden age foreigns, uh, whatever you want to call them, pseudo foreigns, and the modern copper or bronze. I think least. it's because it's the audience. Like, there's 95% of the audience knows what this book is and chases it. Only 5% probably know what most of the golden age books are, you know? And of that, if 1% of that 5% is even aware that there's the foreign copies that we're just talking at such infinitesimal numbers that it doesn't matter. Plus the golden age just is rare to begin with. So people aren't looking. This is a, this is, this is a mass market limited variant. I mean, the Australian sell for major money, the Canadian sell for major money. Um, but not when it comes to the foreign golden age. I, and and while sold- taking, and, and while taking a shit today, I saw a guy hit one of these with a nunchuck and take it out of its case. So <laughs> <laughs> that's exceptional, dude. Will you share that video with me, please? I'd like yeah, to get dude. it on our Instagram. The dude, straight up had a fucking pair of nunchucks and he threw up the the uh, Secret Wars eight, hit it with the nunchuck, and it just cracked. It was like slow mo. It was nice. crazy, dude. But it's definitely you know. how I'm cracking slabs from now. That yeah, should yeah. that should go on the IG, Nico. We need that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I, I don't know. Listen, I'm a foreign guy. I love them. I understand the rarity. I just don't think the world is ready for it. They're ready for, I know this cover. I know there's a newsstand that's rare. And I know there's a Canadian price variant that's rare. I want that. They have not got their comic knowledge back pre at least 65. And most of them aren't pre 1985. So it just is, man. Yeah. I stopped questioning. Well, I've stopped questioning the market because I obviously don't know shit most of the time. Well, hold on. Let me share something with you. Ready? Yes. <laughs> Thanks to whoever sent me this. <laughs> Straight up nunchucks, man. <laughs> this makes me, I'm happy already. Slow mo, the spin. Like I was hoping he was going to swing and miss, but. Bam! Beautiful. What? God bless him. Go Good ninja, person. go ninja, go! Shout out to uh, <laughs> City Limits Comics for uh, making providing us all feel good. Entertainment, or, providing some entertainment on the market report, ladies and gentlemen. I remember days not long ago when this book, to Dracula ten nine eight, was a five k book. Not very long ago. Now a nine four is almost six. I remember uh, back when I had like perfect comic knowledge because I was just getting back into the hobby and I wasn't like, you know, st- stupid like everybody else that's been in it for a while. And I was like, oh, two Dracula 10, 9, 8. That's, that's a great buy right now. You can probably get one of those for like five, six thousand dollars. Didn't buy one. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody uh, here did. I don't remember who. I wonder if it's our, our buddy on the in the chat. I think he has one. Nice. There was, I remember uh, the only, this was seven, maybe eight years ago is uh, I was in uh, uh, Manhattan. And so I went to uh, Mid- Midtown, the only, my only trips over there. And I remember they had, they had one on the wall for, for, uh, for three, for 3000. Wow. And I remember thinking that was like, oh man, that's, that's crazy. Just for, <laughs> just, just for Blade. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> Fuck is that? That'd be my, that'd, It'd probably be my most expensive comic now. You know what I mean? 
Uh, we talked about a 9-6 of this book the other week, the first Hellfire Club. Uh, actually, wow. I only the only reason I think about this book, Sean is a good friend of ours. We used to joke about the Hellfire Club in the, in the Google Plus days. <laughs> and I said, we should just pull our money to get one of these in 9-8 for our friend. And I remember thinking, that's like five, six hundred bucks. We could do that. That wouldn't take much. Yeah. Now, seven K. I don't I, even I, think that. I think like four hundred, dude. Yeah, it was. It was. <laughs> I, I want to say five hundred bucks. I don't get this book at all. It makes like, no sense. I can't wrap my brain around this one. Why not? Kitty I'll Pride t- and Emma Frost. The, uh, to me, it's just because I don't like the cover that much, and they're not on it. It's just kind of like a. It's just uh it's just if the the cover just feels random to me. And um I'll tell you what, a couple of months ago a buddy of mine paid three grand for a nine eight and I thought he was nuts for doing that. I'm just like, why are you doing you know what I mean? I, I poo pooed it. That dude and, just doubled that shit plus. Right. Yep. Shows I what I know. I don't know. I don't, I don't, don't know ask me advice shit. anymore. I, I tell yeah. Ozzy, man. <laughs> Whatever you ask me, do the opposite I tell you. There's a lot of stuff I got to unlearn yep. when it comes to comics right now. We need yeah, to get a review on this show. We need yeah, a review for sure. I feel like Kelly, like Kelly Bundy, can only she can only hold so many stats, and so <laughs> at once and they're like nobody tell her anything, and then so they said <laughs> who scored four touchdowns in one game for the city record for Polk High, and it was the one fact she lost. I'm like <laughs> my goal, my my goal is not to be like the Kelly Bundy of comics. Right. Yeah. I, le- I learned what all the keys are. Now I don't want to learn anything else. Yeah. You know what no, I mean? Okay. This is an evolving. This is an evolving game, and I, I I paid pay attention to like some of the younger crowds and and reader speculators and stuff like that, and to see you know to see where some of the new new money can go and where you can actually you know actually speculate and make more money. And I, I don't play much of a Wednesday game anymore, so uh, you know not at the not not living uh, next to a bunch of stores like I used to. So, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, you got, you got to, you got to hone your skills. You got to, you got to, you got to keep up with the kids, man, mm. and figure out what they're doing and then still skip most of the store variants. So, uh, I'm trying to size X-Men. I, I don't need to say anything here. I just look at the prices seven, five for 5,600, a nine, two for 13, six. Uh, as I say very often trading my nine, Oh, for about a thousand dollars trade at the time about four years ago feels like the dumbest trade i've ever made Ugh. yeah and that nine two with i see i like it having the nice off white white pages because that's yeah. <laughs> that's what that's what mine has so but i always get sad when i'm like oh man that only sold because of the white pages yeah. i see the, the off white white no. yeah that I, book I, I over a year ago when i moved i had the the same as the nine two on the right on ebay for Thirty three hundred bucks for any or anybody to have, and I and it just it thankfully did not sell, and I sold other things enough to equal like the the amount of cash that I that I was looking for, and uh, really glad that that wasn't one of them. Yeah, I agree. Oh man, uh, speaking, uh, woo! We we saw this one hit ten k or well ninety nine and change. Yeah. not very long ago. It is interesting that the SS sold for basically no difference. I, I think it's a mute point at that point. So, but what was but great about is- this? What was great about this auction? I was watching it last night, and it was at seven thousand with three seconds to go, and it jumped up by ten. Gr- it t- jumped up to ten grand in within three seconds. Yeah, it, it's a ten k book officially now. We aren't we aren't arguing. Two sales makes it legit. Another book that should never have an autograph on it. Right. Yeah, nobody, cares, nobody cares about that autograph. Yeah, There's so all, many on that's there. That's the problem. I, they're all freaking autographed. Having one that's not autographed, I think, is a big win. Mm-hmm. Me too. But I'll, I'll be honest, um, for for this book, uh, in the gold and the placement, it's it's a, it's a – it's as good as you're gonna get on this. It looks book, nice. I think. Yeah, yeah. could have yeah. gone a lot this worse. Doesn't, this doesn't detract. He might have the year on there as well. The problem with me on the on the Campbell variants is like, um, like you know the store. I mean, you can't make quite as much as you used to. But like in any of the cons, if he was gonna be there, that, that shit was just especially SDCC and stuff. He'd have Bush. There's just easy freaking money. So you get in there, and he try to he try to get the unsigned stuff because he signed so much stuff. But the thing is, his logo has a signature. He signs. He signs the art somewhere where, where yep. it gets printed out, 
And then he signs it in big in bigger, bigger signature than that usually. So it literally has his his yeah. signature, his big ass signature three times on every autograph book that he has. Now this mm-hmm. this doesn't this isn't like a JSC book, so it doesn't have like that logo or anything like that. It's just straight marble. And I I don't I don't remember if he has it signed anywhere else in there. I can't his feet cut off yeah. you can't tell but um yeah so i dude i'm like dude how many times you you need to say your name on one fucking cover man but uh yeah that one's all right ah speaking of deadpool this one conf- continues to defy gravity i mean is it was, that it was, is that the um the oh god what are you the uh, standard not the deluxe newsstand uh, that's standard because it, it says it, it usually. Is there like a it, little two or something? It usually it says, says direct it, edition on it. It says del- it? deluxe variant, but I don't know what that it, is. It says deluxe on the CGC label, um, and and it doesn't on this one because I know where they put it. It's under the under the title in the center there. They put the deluxe edition, and I and I don't see the extra. T- I can't squint, but I don't see that. That's extra a type fucking pain there. in the ass. Yeah, yeah so I don't think honestly, I don't think the there's much. I think newsstands any grade. Yeah, I think newsstand sells for more. I don't think the um, uh, wait. This says deluxe, but I don't think it says it on there. Oh well. Yeah. I don't. I don't. Do they sell? Do they do the deluxe and regular? I don't think they sell for much difference. I don't think people really care. Dude, I don't. I don't, I don't oh know. yeah, no, you you can't you can't buy the regulars anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're they're all gone on eBay. All the regulars. Because I've been trying to grab them. <laughs> There's like one uh, for two hundred bucks raw, and it ain't a nine eight. Something killing the children. Fifteen k now, or fifteen hundred now. Dude, I heard um, Saga is going to be the new something is killing the children. <laughs> did oh, you? Oh, fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> right. I I did look, and Monsters is freaking cheap now. Real yeah, the, um, the unlocked uh, Jenny Frisian variant. Uh, I had it's the only book, it's the only one I have. So I had it up. I was, I was starting to get like more offer. I got up to like five hundred fifty dollar offer, and I was like, "Screw this!" I just pulled it off eBay. Yeah, I was like, I don't know what's much. happening. I don't even caught my pants down on this thing, man. Not right? Yeah. So it's only it's the only it's the only one I have. So we were okay. Um, we were at that show, uh, Nico. A couple of weeks ago, and there was um, a set of one through eight, for which I'd have bought. For- you didn't tell me about it. You went I thought back you to knew. buy it yourself, and they were gone. Actually, I was holding out because I uh, thought my buddy he wanted to buy it, but he like shit the bed and didn't. And uh, I was just like, I was close to buying it myself, and I it's like I have pretty much every every issue, and I regret not buying that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they're hard to find. Yeah. They're in collector's now they hands. Are. Now, I don't know. You know, there's a long time. There um, are there now are, in a show. Yeah, there are none to be found, like, even up on a wall, you know? And, and uh, issue 16, like, it's a wrap after that. There will be no more short printed issues of something's <laughs> killing the children. Mm. It was, <laughs> issue 16 was 145,000 print run. There were 155. It was somewhere near there. 155,000, and only 30 of them were um were uh, store books. So mm. organically, yeah. Tinian said he said he had to go lay down when he found yeah. out that, and he, you know he's he's the one who who actually announced the print run. So obviously, gonna believe it, you know. <laughs> wow. So yeah, that's nuts, dude. All right, I'm gonna visit a few books from the past just to see what's up. Uh, Voltron. We we talk about Thundercats. We talk about freaking uh, all the other ones. Voltron still. That's that's down, right? It felt down. Yeah, uh, and if not, it's still not anywhere near the two K we're paying for everything else. So it says one day sale. Wonder if he just ran a probably just ran a shitty auction. It's not a thousand dollar book, but yeah, it's usually more than that. Okay, so. I saw that right at four twenty. Considering what's going on right now, I'd I'd, I'd happily you would hit it. I'd happily yeah sell something I don't want. And have the Voltron be really excited in my in my display case in the living room. I have my uh, I've got like I think I got like two lions left, but including like the main lion. Nice. So I've got Chuck Norris riding them in the living room. <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm jumping out of order because you brought him up. 
<laughs> I don't even have this on the report for anything more than I didn't know you could get it. Chuck Norris. Oh, SS? SS? Okay. Oh, okay. I would have oh, spent man. 400 just to get a Chuck Norris SS. It is oh, on yeah. my search list now. On a, on a, pink, on a pink cover? Oh, yeah. Amazing. Just... Uh, I'm pretty sure he's actually wearing that outfit while riding Voltron in my <laughs> nice. living room because it's, yeah. it's it's the little karate, you know, like eight inch or whatever dude with like the leg action that doesn't work. So he's yeah. just hanging out, on, yeah, riding Voltron. So Chuck Norris, the man. Um, this book I noticed is starting to climb back up from the depths of 2020 after that movie kind of went to shit on them. Um, mm. It it hit almost a grand at one point. And then it sunk back to 500. It's starting to climb back out of its hole. What is the Hellboy book to have? <sighs> I don't know. Uh, oh, next to men, number 14, because I got like nine copies of them. It's not 14, <laughs> is it? It's 21. It's that Dime Press, right? The Dime Press? No, it's the one that has. Or best the... sellers? Best sellers? No, the he's best making, sellers is. He's sellers making is a joke about the, uh, the poster. Yeah, I know. But Dime uh, Press is the one to get, right? Well, so. Sort of- it's a prototype character, and uh, the the um, yeah, there's the fucking marker factor, where like they're all purple or scraped. Um, uh, they're all a lot of purple label because it was done in an Italian factory, and we met a guy that had a case of them. He's like, I send one in, and I get a restored. I send one in and get a blue because they just the factory literally used a black marker to fix printing errors. And the yeah, next and this, one was got him out of a case. Jesus. That, that guy got him out of a case, right? So yes. it was like he knew for a fact they weren't altered. They just came out of the factory that way. Yeah. So we I, we actually knew of <laughs> this actually happened, and some would I come rest though, and some didn't. As a kid of the '90s, this is the one I always thought of. I, I don't know why this is the one in my brain. It's not a great cover. I think maybe because it is San Diego Comic Con, it kind of stuck out. I I don't know which one I'd put money in. I, I like them all, but it, it becomes one of those confusing ones. Nextman does have a, probably the best cover, so yeah, um, yeah. This I one like was hard to fucking cover. find forever, and then uh, who had this? Who had this one? Uh, Carter, our boy Keith pulled that out of a dollar bin. I watched him do it. Well, I pulled, huh. I pulled one out of a dollar bin. Nice. No, things from another world must have gotten a case of them because they were selling them one per customer, forty bucks each. I made, I had six email accounts between myself and my wife, and I ordered one under each. Wow! And they were yeah. I got, I got a, I got a, I got a bunch. And you know what? They, they, they re-released them. Um, they re-released them. Uh, like I say, like a year or two later, more showed up. And I think the same guy that gave us the link showed us that link. And I had somehow they like up the limits and because I had bought them like a year or two years before, whatever it was, they wouldn't let me, um, they wouldn't let me buy more than or buy any more because I'd hit my limits, even though it was literally at least Damn. a year, if not two years before. Yeah. They wouldn't and let so you. That's, either. that's when my wife got an account. Yeah. I literally created accounts to buy them at that point, but yeah. yes, they would not. John's let them buy going to t hell. You'll be on the ban list. Like I am with mile high. Screw them. I'm done with t that's fine. It is what it is. Um, give me more of those, but other than that. Oh, look at he found more sales for me. Thank you. Yeah, a couple of those sales are from our buddy. Woo! Yeah, Phil, 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 Phil's hitting those. Uh, Phil's Lex. hitting those sales. Oh, did Phil sell those? Mm-hmm. Uh, um, I'm gonna give credit to uh, FKN Rad on IG. He brought it up a few times to me, and uh, he showed me some sales. I had already had one on the market report, but this is. Um, first comic of the power rangers the only other first, one to probably first, can... first magazine yeah okay the other one is the um is under what the hell is it hanes under ruse what is the, that the mini comic from fruit of the loom fruit There's, of the loom yeah needless to say these fuckers are jumping um the i actually wrote some stats down because i was so confused um a nine six is recorded on gpa for 6k and I went, whoa. Uh, an 8.5 is from $800 last month. And then this raw sold for four, four and a quarter, basically. 
There'll be um, more. There are more sales. Yeah, this this book is moving. Um, this book is, uh, you know, they're on the cover. That helps. Um, I, the oh, issue please. is it's in the bins that dealers don't even fucking bring to shows. It's in the back rooms under the shit that nobody will sell if it exists. So if they're out there, you're probably not finding them until you dig in the dirtiest bins and the dirtiest basements of the dirtiest shops. I found I got, mine in a, in a dollar box, not even bagged and boarded. Right, exactly. Yeah, they're out there. I had to get on my hands and knees for them. Yeah, you're you're gonna be you're gonna be you know you know you're on the ground for this one. This is not on a table. So, Godspeed, go looking. Uh, this next one I thought was interesting. Uh, Brian didn't do it as a as a duel, but I wanted to kind of talk about these two together. Um, he sometimes doesn't understand when I'm doing crazy shit. Malibu Sun thirteen nine eight. Um, 3K, regular book. Um, this one, just to the moon, man. To the fucking moon. I wanted to talk about it because this guy, if I know Sean remembers, this one came out of kind of oblivion to have a spawn ad on the back page of this and the traditional edition sold for crazy money for a bit. This is the retailer variant something yeah. special edition I version. So I think uh, this was a little bit more than Malibu Sun for a little while. Yes, our it guy was like from years, Spawn yeah. World. Um, remember a guy from Spawn World? Mm -hmm. He basically uh, candidly indicates that this came out way, way later, and that uh, I think that may have because of uh, you know sort of like the uh, well-respected nature of his site um, been the end of this. Yeah, it's still, probably all shelf still, aids. Still important, stuff. but not uh, as well, important. I was also going on the fact that cover makes a difference. I mean, Amen. Malibu, he's on the cover. This, he's not. Um, Isn't there a Rocket Ranger, too? There's yeah. one called Rocket Ranger. Yeah. 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 There's I, two of the Rusts, a Rocket Ranger, and there's one more Malibu book, I think, that has the, the ad in it, too. And then there's one, one of the Malibus has Wildcats. Um, I've Listen, just, I just happened to find that one. I love those Malibu Suns are hot to me. Yeah, John, yeah. go back to that Malibu Sun real quick. Yeah, the evil so army. If if any, yeah, if anybody out there ever comes across number eight and is a kind soul, it has the first appearance of Ma of Evil Ernie on it. I've been looking for that book forever. It never shows up on eBay. You can never find that son of a gun anywhere. So if anybody ever comes across number eight. One, yeah, what's that, up? That one throws me because, truthfully, most people buy Evil Ernie one for the First Lady Death. Bullshit. Uh, no way. So. No way. Evil Ernie. I thought Evil Ernie two was the First Lady Death. Wasn't Evil Ernie one just? That's our first no. cover, but people like number two better because she yeah. is on the cover. Yeah, the number one's always about Evil Ernie to me. I thought mm -hmm. Lady Death. It's always well. First let's Lady ask Death. the ad. Let's ask the people in the chat. 222 viewers right now live the debates let us know if you guys would uh, think that people more people buy number one for evil ernie first appearance or lady death's first appearance and also if you're watching this after the live let us know in the comments below absolutely all right this one's for brian i hadn't seen an, a 9.8 in a freaking while 1750 buddy god damn yeah, I got yeah, one special. unsigned, one signed, and about three or four others. I got two raw. I think I got a nine zero and a nine six. That's and I, my crazy. only Larry Ham, Larry Ham signed one is one I found in a dollar bin where the hat, where the back cover is like half torn off. But I said, screw it, I'll just have Larry Ham sign it and keep it. That's your PC copy, my yeah, friend. Make there you money go. Any others? Yep. Hell yeah. Uh, some M MCU uh, long spec going. Red Hulk. Now a five hundred dollar nine eight. Oh god. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Whatever. Okay. That was a hundred dollar book for us in our brain. That was a twenty dollar yeah. book in my uh, brain. Iron Man two eighty two nine eight five hundred as well. What? What? Yeah. I don't know. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just let's just close our eyes, guys. I don't know. <laughs> <what to think. laughs> All you old guys in the chat are like, what are you talking about? That can't be right, right? I'm shaking my cane at that, baby. <laughs> exactly. Get oh, off my fucking God. lawn with that bullshit. 
<laughs> I'm calling uh, it something I, racist. <laughs> <laughs> All right, gonna throw some old old stuff at you real quick because you stole Chuck Norris out of the end. Uh, Mask uh, one, gorgeous. beautiful freaking book. Uh, Thirty four hundred for this. I mean, for the grade, it is well presenting as shit. Absolutely. I think yeah. this was a steal. I thought it was going to go for more with all the craziness. Golden age is where us old motherfuckers need to go to buy. Don't tell Dino. Yeah. It's 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 the land of prosperity. Mm. It's the only place where there's opportunity left. Yeah, when I see books like this, I, I don't I still don't want to talk. I got more to say. Um nice Phantom Lady, eighteen hundred and change, decent grade, decent my appeal. Oh yeah. This is the one I'm gonna kick myself over for the rest of my life. Oh fuck! Exciting comics nine. Note says name on wow cover. The name on the cover is Elden. For those of you besides DS in the chat that obviously knows what that is, that is a pedigree in most conditions, unless it happens to be a different Elden. But there is a pedigree for a kid named Elden that wrote his name on all of his books, and they made a pedigree that most people are getting submitted and, and catching later. Because it wasn't, it, it had kind of dispersed before it was really figured out. Um, the other reason I, I love this book is Black Terror, first Black Terror. Uh, he's a pharmacist character. I'm a pharmacist. I, I, I dig it. It's also a cool ass character. Um, great costume, which Nico has pointed out is reminiscent of the Punisher minus the cape. Um, just freaking cool. I I was the uh, the 3900 bidder. Somebody beat bid 3901, and somebody beat him at 3950. I had a good idea where it was going to go. Once the Elden came in, I was like, frick, I don't know. It could go for 6K and I wouldn't be surprised. So I just didn't have the huevos to bid higher. And I will kick my ass for the rest of life on that one. So, Brian, you're in. All right. Let's make this quick. Um, this is interesting. Not that one. That is definitely interesting. I would have bought that too. <laughs> Uh, vintage Polish bootleg Star Wars Boba Fett for all of the uh, bootleg fans out there like me. This is one of the big ones. I thought this is kind of cool. So there was another one that sold recently also, but there you go. A bootleg that sells for 512 bucks that was made in, 19, in the 90s. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Magic the Gathering fans. How about this one? PSA 10 Magic the Gathering Unlimited Pack. <coughs> graded. $9,300. That's a lot mm. of money. $9,300 is a lot of money for an, a graded pack. Yeah, it's Probstein, so I'll give it that maybe, you know, that 10% or whatever he gets at 20%. Usually he gets over probably more. But that's a lot of money for that pack. That That is crazy. Uh, we have a lot of Magic the Gathering fans. Maybe they can let us know. I know that these are super easy to search, if I remember correctly. So What's the card people are hoping to get, though? The Black Lotus. There's a lot of big cards. I only know about that Black Lotus one, right? So I'm like you, um, Brian. That's yeah. I got one card. Like yeah, it's a Black, Black Lotus. Lotus. Yeah. But I'll have to... Yeah. So uh, at this point, if you find any of those early '90s Magic hey, the Gathering, uh, one other question, guys: Can anyone on the panel actually tell a Black Lotus from another card, unless it has the word Black Lotus on it, which I don't <laughs> yeah. know? I know what you it looks actually like. Can you can? Yeah. Yeah, I know what it looks like. They <laughs> actually made. Else? There's different versions of it. There's like a first printing, a second printing. There's a, a different printings of it. So you have to be careful, but they're all by worth the, money. By the silence of the rest of the panel, I'll conclude that you are the only guy that can do that. You're yeah, now my magic right. guy. I'm gonna call you. Oh, you can do it too, like I got two calls. No, I got no idea. No. Uh, so, okay. we're back to no. you, Brian. I'm so this is this is <laughs> this is why I love our, our our live chat. 222 live listeners right now, and as soon as we ask it, they all let us know that you can find the Power Nine. So uh, the Power Nine are, I guess, the big nine cards that you want to get. Is that is that sound right? And maybe that the fuck the, would I know? What are you asking us for? We don't even I'm know not asking you, assholes. Oh, oh, yeah. so I'm asking, asking, I'm asking our, asking our chat. Them. Yeah, yeah, they're smart. Yeah, so uh, there is a lot of craziness with uh, Magic the Gathering cards. There's always have been, but man, nine thousand three hundred for an open pack uh, wow. can be searched is crazy to me. But I would never take it out of there for a ten on that. So here we go, Vinny Kumar. Shout out to Vinny Kumar. Vinny Kumar says I was at a yard sale. Some dude told me there were like eight black lotuses in a box of Magic cards. He says he wasn't in a Magic, so I bought the lot. I 
Oh, he says no black lotuses. F him. Uh, <laughs> well, I know that there are a ton of fake black lotus cards out there, so be yeah. careful. Yeah, I've had uh, a couple comic shops here in the valley get bumped, uh, you know, screwed over on that. So, mm. yeah, yeah, crazy. Let's see here. The next one we've got. I got some uh, interesting stuff. This is a 2015 Garbage Pail Kid card. It's a Michael Jordan card they made uh, called Mad Michael. Um, number 7A, the PSA 10. I didn't even know about this card. It's obviously a newer card, 2015. 24 bids at $661. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Um, so uh, I don't remember the set. It must have been an 80s set or something or like a, a play off the 80s, it looks like. Uh, but 30th anniversary, 80s. I don't know. Who knows? But this is uh, pretty crazy. $661. Here we go, Sean. Check this out, brother. All right. So the one on the left oh, is an unopened UK mini unopened box of 48 packs that sold for $528, which I believe Sean showed us one of those the other day in his hand. Yeah. And then the one on the right, this guy has a, a, a I don't know if it's a full box. It could be 48 packs, but he's selling each individual pack for $330 a piece. One unopened pack from the box, $330. That's I paid $300 for my PSA nine pack probably like three years ago, something like that. Wow. So yeah, absolutely bonkers. It's, it's really crazy. All right. This is interesting. Uh, Hugh Jackman auto on a card sells for $665. Now, yes, this is a card that is put in the set, so it, you know, it has a little bit more value to it. Um, but I thought it was interesting. And uh, this kind of got me down a rabbit hole, right? So I started looking at, let's look at some of these. So the, the 2020 Upper Deck Marvel Ages comic clipping, where they clip com pieces of comics, which be very interesting to find out what comics they chose and how they did it. But uh, it has a Jim Stranko autograph on it, which is one of the most beautiful autographs in all of autograph history. Uh, $225 for that card. A Stanley autograph. This is probably the only Stanley autograph that I would want to buy is on a card like this that came, you know, either from a redemption or was in a pack. Um, and this sold to me, $272 is cheap for something like that. I would rather have a Stanley autograph on a card than a, uh, comic any days. And this brought me thinking how many of those Stanley impel foom, you know, images did people get signed by Stan Lee? Because I don't see those very often, right? Those would be dope to have signed. I bet you there's a lot of them signed and PSA even authenticated them. So very cool stuff. This Marvel golden age metal relics. All right, this is very interesting to me. Now, it's got a piece of gold, it looks like, in there. And uh, so I uh, pulled it up. Let me go ahead and do this. And I've never seen this, so let's take a look together. There you go. It's got a nice piece of uh, one gram bar of gold in it. It's numbered 6 of 10. Uh, Marvel Mystery Comics from January 1 of 1940. It's got a picture of the comic on it and a piece of gold. I thought that was a pretty cool little thing. If you can't have, like, you know, they're, they're, they're basing these on when they get a piece of, like, the jersey or the bat or something. And you can't really do that with a Golden Age comic, really. So yeah. they, they put a piece of gold in it, which I thought was really cool. Um, pretty interesting. So that sold for $659. All right. Let's or did it this. not? I think it said reserve not met. Oh, it did? Did it? I think, yeah, I think maybe the dude. Uh, okay, maybe not. Maybe not. Was well, waiting it, for more, but it got yeah. a bid. Yeah, you got a bid. All right, so I bring these up all the time, these damn Fortnite cards. Now, this shit really blows me away. Jesus Christ. Now, these are different than I've, the ones I've been showing. Like, uh, this is so bizarre to me. Like, I would have never, ever thought those Fortnite cards would be worth money. And 12 grand. 31 bids, you know, three grand, four grand, two grand, all with more than 10 These bids. These were packs of cards. This is just came from Target, packs. right? Yeah, you can get them at Target, Walmart. They, they were and three they were little green a boxes. Years ago. Yep, yep. No, okay, now, is this, is this a Fortnite card game? Yes. No, these are just cards. They basically put them out like baseball cards based on Fortnite characters. Oh, Did no. You, you know how many of those and 
like and football and UFC and soccer, I left just only trying to pick up basketball. Oh, all of, all of them. That's how many I left. All of them. Went right. And all I had to do, and really did I really? I was looking at gold, and all I could think about was Zion and John Morant, and there's just all this just absolute gold just sitting there, yeah. like free for the taking. And now you wow. can't even like now you can't even get anything in stores anymore for that reason. And this is why it absolutely just blows me away because I am so angry at myself for not picking these up. And those were chase cards, I take it. Uh, so it looks like one's a crystal shard <clears throat> pop one. It looks like it's an, you might have only be able to get that in Italy. I don't know. Crystal shard Italy. I don't know what that means. So if anybody knows, but the black Knight hollow is from USA. Um, don't get me started on this, man. <laughs> John's like, my kids have them. I've, they're around here somewhere. They're in no, I, I remember going to a shop and seeing that and went, I should buy a pack for my kids. And I didn't. And going, oh god! Now I'm actually hunting one. Thankfully, it's not any of these. But Jesus Christ! Yeah, they're they're bonkers, and I'll keep showing them because yeah, uh, it's it's absolutely crazy. But if anybody wants and, to sell a fish sticks, uh, one of these, let me know. Yeah, because the fish sticks. Don't ask. Yeah, don't ask. Um, all right. If you so, don't know, you don't know. I, I didn't. Uh, <laughs> a, a, a couple more now. One of them, um, where is it? I didn't. I don't think I put it on here. Now, one of them I saw was a Pink Floyd. It was a somebody put out a Pink Floyd rookie, and this made me think about uh, a conversation that me and Nico had over the phone about foreign cards again and this type of stuff. And yeah, I lost the auction on that. Dino fucking uh, basically jacked me while I was on the phone. It told me it was stupid, and then I got outbid. Because well, other people fucking bought it from Uganda or something. I was like, motherfucker. So here is from one seller that I follow the seller because this is where I used to buy all my European Panini hockey cards from. Like my, uh, you know, uh, pre-rookie Fedorov, uh, Pablo uh, Bure, Peter Forsberg, you know, the Swedish team, the, the Russian team, all that stuff. So this uh, is a Panini uh, Mario Andretti rookie sold for $605. And, and, and what I was trying to explain to Nico was this, that a lot of these Panini quote unquote cards are stickers, right? And if you guys remember back in the day in the late eighties, early nineties, you used to go to the store and you would see all these packs of st baseball stickers and you'd come with a notebook and you'd have to open them up and you'd put the the players in the notebook where the card said them to go and it was just a fun thing and you tried to fill the whole notebook up well that's how what cards are in in europe basically like that was their cards and they did a lot of um track and field olympics hockey and and soccer right well this is the tyson rookie uh oh this one sold for four hundred dollars and as you can see it's in the notebook so wow. yeah um this is what the notebooks look like Here's everybody's cards in there. And a lot of these are great cards, man. Like Thomas Hearns. Jesus uh, Christ. Yeah, right? Like, I mean, how cool it would it be to just, you know, find one of these. So how really, sick, dude, how sick would that look on your wall? It has an eight, uh, eight and, uh, how do, I don't even know how to say his first name. Senna, this guy, the the, the race car driver, um, Ayrton Senna. Uh, I know he's a huge race car, Formula One driver in it too so I, I imagine that's probably a score but you guys can see this is how you know they used to do their collecting of their sports heroes these super sports right all right so there's that one now here's a another interesting thing that happened over the week that i noticed one seller sold a crap ton of these star wars comic packs now they sold the Star Wars Heir to the Empire comic pack for $137, uh, which is normal to me. But, man, somebody got some good deals. Like, this is the uh, Osh the Sherrod Het uh, comic pack with Kiati Monday unopened. I don't know if 101 is um, a, a lot for this one. But these comic packs, some of these comic packs were super hard to find. They were exclusives, I believe, through, like, Entertainment Earth or something. Um, just And if you guys know your Star Wars spec, you guys know who that character is. Uh here is some more. Let me get back. With um, the heir to the empire toy is only one hundred and thirty-five dollars. 
Yeah, but the chances of uh, that comic coming out in good condition are slim to none. It's like the uh, Spider-Man 2099. So it, you can look at some of these. Uh, these This guy had some great Star You're Wars. best off not even opening the damn thing. Yeah, yeah. This guy had some great Star Wars sales. Here's one that I really love. This is the um, the Royal Guard BS uh, that they put out. That uh, I always collect Royal Guard, so I always collected these. Um, th he just had a, these comic packs, and, and for people that don't know about certain Star Wars collectibles that are so rare, like these Target, these Target two packs are really hard to find. Um, they came in these little circles. He had a whole set of them. Uh, just really cool Star Wars stuff. Here's some. Here's the. This is a, a killer deal on this one. This is the one that I love. This is the White Vader comic pack. Oh wow! Ooh. Yeah. All right. That's gorgeous, dude. I'll yeah. feel the met. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty cool. That's the kind so, of shit I'd actually buy. And uh, just really cool stuff. And and if you guys don't know about the Infinity Star Wars Infinity series, they're basically what if uh, Star Wars comics. And this one was about what if Darth Vader lived um, at the end of Jedi, and he turned to the back to the to the uh, Force. I and, had no idea that they made that toy. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty cool, yeah. right? Yeah, I got one sitting in. Uh, I actually opened all mine, so I got them displayed because that's one of my favorite all time characters uh, or all time action figures right there. Uh, here's some more. This is the Wedge Antilles. Um, I don't know who this guy's name is, but this is a really good deal. I, th I think at $37. You can see they're kind of scratched up, but I mean, these things are so rare. This, the, If you guys ever get a chance, take a look at some of the uh, packs. I think um, Peter Renna did a really good breakdown on the star wars packs uh and i believe that you can find that on uh, reniverse youtube channel or on um the flip side channel somewhere it's uh, i believe in the action figure uh, uh playlist but this is what i wanted to bring up now a lot of people don't realize this but star wars put out an a quote-unquote expanded universe based on the 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 fig the uh books and this was before they put out that comic pack with thrawn right so this was the original thrawn character a uh, thrawn toy that came out you guys can see here and these when they first came out sold for a grip they sold for quite a bit now they're just just nothing i mean absolutely nothing so um if you guys can find them grab them it might be worth you know grabbing a couple I've of i've seen uh, a few of those loose lately yeah yeah See, that's, I, I don't the, know. that's the type of investment i'm willing to make yeah yeah cheap <laughs> right you know what cheap. i mean 30 yeah. 30 30 bucks you're taking up space because you're a toy i can i can deal with you yeah <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. 400 on the same page 400 bucks and pray uh, maybe not <laughs> yeah right um all right so this was interesting we've talked about this before this is the vintage star wars kenner boba fett action figure card mail away rocket firing thing so again if you wanted that rocket firing boba fett it was a it was a thing you had to mail in for and it was like one of the first figures they were going to release for the set, I believe. And then they realized they couldn't do it. So they sent out all these cards to people saying, Dear Kenner customer, we have received your order for the free Boba Fett action figure. Unfortunately, due to delays in manufacturing and shipping, we have been unable to fill their Boba Fett order as quickly as we had originally planned. Please accept our sincere apology. We will ship your free Boba Fett action figure as soon as possible. And you should be receiving this figure within the next four to six weeks. Again, sorry for the disappointment. And it's the actual card. Hard, right sold for five hundred and eighty five dollars wow could you imagine keeping that like how cool is it that they kept that so that i'm impressed to me, i'm also impressed that somebody would pay 585 fucking dollars for that jesus yeah well back i mean to it's star cool wars, but damn does star anybody wars know about crazy. does anybody know about these star wars um hunter they're, they're top star wars card traders and they're digital and I saw a ton of sales for them. I mean, look at these sales. These are all digital. Ask I mean, Philly. Yeah, like a, a lot of money um, out there for these things. Uh, so well, one second here. I feel like this is something Phil's buying. That, that makes sense, I believe. <laughs> I can see that. And something he'll try to explain to me, but I won't understand even after he explains it to me. All right. Uh, so, yeah, you guys take, check out these uh, Star Wars digital cards. If you guys know much about them, let us know in the comments below. Uh, just I like that Pressman variant you got over there. 
Oh yeah, these you get so you guys can always see it the stuff I'm looking at, right? <laughs> and so yeah, you guys love that. Like giving away some cornbread. Um, this My was man. interesting. So uh, one person sold a ton of sets of the Walking Dead autographs. This was mm. um, oh, absolutely cool. crazy to me. They sold for thousands of dollars, but again, they're whole sets of all the autographs. Uh, as you guys can see, I think these were like one or two per box, but this guy collected them all. And Damn. Yeah, Shane. There's a bunch of Shanes. There's Strong. Steven. I mean, they're all there. And he's got multiple ones of them, and he sold a ton of them. So that one sold for $1,800. Um, he sold another set for $1,200, another set for 1000 another set for 900 So that, to me, that seems kind of cheap. Um, I don't I, I couldn't tell you, but it, it really it to me it seems kind of cheap. This was very interesting to me. Kiss German Pops card, nineteen seventy nine. It looks like a miniature uh, record album, right? Look at this thing. Wow! All right, how cool is that? It's like a miniature record album. I think they had like gum inside. Get the um, fuck out of here! Yeah, but Ooh. this is from nineteen seventy nine, and it sold for twenty two. They're two hundred and twenty-seven dollars, so pretty cool. Um, I got uh, that mouse first appearance that still got the gum in it. Fucking freaks me out. I'm like, yeah, is yeah. this gonna be bad? Is it gonna go through the plastic eventually? <laughs> like, do I need to do something with it? So this is what uh, kind of interesting. I talked to Nico about these. These are some more early Marvel cards, and uh, these are European. I believe that these. Where were these from? I can't remember where these are from, but I think I don't think they're from the United States, but these are older than the Impel set. And you can see how they look. They don't look like they're in the... I mean, they look like they're in good condition, but they didn't look like they're printed very well or cut very well. So, uh, But this is a set of Series 1 lot of 65 cards that sold for $180, which is kind of cool. I'm going to turn into the John Z of foreign fucking cards, except yeah. for the difference is John actually understands about comics. I don't understand anything about cards. I'm just going to be buying like fucking south african dc fucking collectible cards from like 1962 or some shit it's, it's yeah. just bad it's a bad rabbit hole now Don't people are are calling this the harley quinn rookie no shit yeah this is 1993 tops animated series one harley quinn number 36 and uh this is a raw one it sold for about 37 dollars so mm. not too bad Maybe it might be worth looking into those or 29 bucks. Um, all right. I think I have, I think that might be it. So, yeah. So very interesting. Uh, this is just fun stuff that we see throughout the week. And that is the market.